Hey Globy, I got a riddle for you. What do you get when you put together medical doctors, microbiologists, geologists, engineers, and physicists? No guesses? Oh, I bet you got it. NASA. NASA is a lot more than just astronauts. People at NASA are engineers, scientists, computer programmers, accountants, astronomers, writers, graphic designers, and mathematicians, just to name a few. There are so many opportunities and programs you can get involved in at NASA that you'll find lots of other careers as well. One of our other engineer friends from NASA Johnson Space Center is Heather Paul. She recently spent some time with some other members of the NASA family and found out just how unique the organization really is. Hi everyone, I'm Heather Paul from NASA Johnson Space Center and right now I'm in Key Largo with Nick Skitland and our team from NASA. So Nick, can you explain a little bit about what we're doing here in Key Largo? I mean, I love being here, but don't we have some scientific objectives we're trying to do? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're preparing for a field test and we're actually preparing for a field test to understand crew performance on the moon. Nick, can you give me a little background about yourself? How did you get this really awesome job? <laughs> it is a really awesome job. And actually, I started um, as an engineer. Uh, I went to school in Indiana. And I started in the NASA Cooperative Education Program as a summer co-op. And I came down here and I had a chance to work on spacesuits. I had a chance to work um, on space station. And I actually had an opportunity to work in the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory, which is a big pool that we have at NASA, which we do the very similar things. We train astronauts underwater. That's a great job combining science time with water sports. So who else did you talk to, Heather? I have Bill Todd with me, who is the mission manager. He is the big man. So how are you doing? Super. Everything's great. Awesome. So we've been enjoying beautiful weather here, but we're yeah. here to actually do science and research. So Absolutely. Can you talk to me a little bit about what we're doing? This is the facility where the Aquarius Habitat, which is the world's only undersea research habitat, it's right here in Key Lago. It's about five miles offshore. And it's the closest thing to living in space that we could find anywhere. So Bill, for the folks who are going to watch this interview, what would you recommend that they study if they want to be someone as awesome as you, a mission manager for <laughs> underwater <laughs> research that leads us into lunar exploration? You know, that, that's an that's a interesting question. You can have a background in all different types of things. At NASA, we have people that have done such a wide variety of things in their career before they come to NASA or they study different things. The, the same old adage is true. You know, if you, if you have a grasp of the basic sciences, that truly, truly helps. And if you have the ability to deal in an operational environment um, and be able to take the science and apply it to an operational environment, those are the things that help us in a project like this. But the team at the Undersea Laboratory wasn't the only group that Heather got to talk to about their careers. And I have Dr. Robert Howard with me. How are you doing, Robert? Hi, Heather. It's good to see you. Good to see you as well. So tell me a little bit about what you do. I, would do, I do what's called human factors. We're basically concerned with the interaction of man with machine. I grew up wanting to be involved in the space program, so from the time I was five years old, even younger than that, I knew NASA was where I was going to end up. So I went through a lot of different NASA programs when I was in college. I started working for NASA in something called the NASA Scholars, which was a combination of a scholarship and summer internships. I actually funded my schooling on a NASA fellowship and worked summers on a NASA co-op. So do you feel like all of those experiences with internships and the co-op program really helped you to get a good foundation for the engineering and science that you're doing now? Oh, they were all part of the puzzle. To every degree and every summer internship experience, they all combined together and helped me to do what I'm doing now. Thanks for sharing your experiences, Heather. It sounds like the people you talk to really enjoy their jobs. You know, I've talked to a few of the NASA people we've had here on our world, too. You might remember Andrea Mosey from the Lunar Rock Laboratory. Her advice to students, set your goals high and do your best. Don't limit yourself. Andrea says the best careers are in the sciences. And she should know, her background is in chemistry, math, and geology. And now she works with moon rocks every day. And our friend Eric Weiser reminded me that every single extra I have, from my cell phone to my computer or game box, you name it, was developed, engineered, and built by someone who has a degree in science, technology, engineering, or mathematics. And at NASA, those same careers help send astronauts to the International Space Station or collect important data about climate on our world. 
I guess the most important thing to remember is NASA is looking for people with a variety of backgrounds who study a variety of subjects and are willing to try new things. I've always loved being an explorer, but after learning so much about the groundbreaking discoveries made by NASA scientists, I may be thinking about a career change. So let's see, Globy. I could be um, a microbiologist, or a virtual reality technician, um, a meteorologist, a pilot, a model builder, astrophysicist, educator turned astronaut. Um,